Let's see, where were we at? Uh, Violet and the Pie of Life. <gasps> Chapter 6. My morning in five senses and five emojis. Seeing mom's face close up. That doesn't look very happy. Hearing her say, you slept through the alarm. Definitely not happy. Smelling her morning breath. Oh, there's a smiley face with a tongue sticking out. Feeling after finding no emails from dad. Sad again. Tasting the lump in my throat. It's a yucky face. I didn't have time to go to my locker before school, so I had to ask my first period teacher if I could borrow a textbook. Violet Summers, Miss Merriweather said as I approached her desk. I was surprised she knew my name since it was only September and she taught approximately 163 kids, five classes of about 30 to 35 kids each. The bell rang. Once it stopped, I said, may I please borrow the class textbook? Instead of handing me the math book, Miss Merriweather said, I was going to ask to see me, you to see me after class, but we might as well talk now. She spoke quietly, though I was sure the kids sitting next to her desk could hear. We might as well not talk now, not while my classmates were eavesdropping. That's what I wanted to tell Miss Merriweather. Instead, I silently stared at my sneakers. And as I stared, I realized it was Mom's fault that Mrs. Merriweather was embarrassing me in math class. What? Let's see how she's doing that. So Dad left because of Mom, so I stayed up late worrying about emailing Dad. So I slept through my alarm and had to check my email to see if Dad had emailed back. So I didn't have enough time to go through my locker before first period and get my math textbook. So I had to walk over to Miss Merriweather's desk and ask to borrow a book, and that gave Miss Merriweather the chance to embarrass me. I'm concerned about you, Violet, Miss Merriweather had said. Uh oh. Whenever I look over you over at you in class, Miss Merriweather continued, you're either checking your phone or doodling. I'd hardly call creating mathematical charts of my life doodling, but charts weren't in the syllabus, and the syllabus was what teachers cared about, so I said, I'm sorry, Miss Merriweather. Teachers cared about apologies, too. Violet, Miss Merriweather lowered her voice almost to a whisper. Don't be embarrassed if you're struggling with the concepts. I let out a snort and then tried to disguise it with a cough. The only concept I struggled with in math class was boredom. My snort cough made even more kids stare at me. Great. Instead of tuning out, raise your hand and ask questions, Miss Merriweather said, or see me at lunch or after school. I bit my, lef I bit my lip to stop myself from snorting again. It's crucial to pay attention because the concepts build on one another. For instance, this week we'll be learning about pi. Next week, we'll be using pi to calculate circumferences of circle. Once we have that down, we'll calculate the volume of spheres. I already knew all about pi. I'd found an amazing YouTube video about it a couple of months ago and binge-watched and read everything I could about pi, which is probably the nerdiest thing any kid ever did on her summer break. But there are so many interesting things about pie. It isn't just about pie. It's the best food ever. Pie sound exactly the same as pie is infinite with no patterns, no repetition. Pie was first studied 4,000 years ago and people are still trying to figure it out. Even computers can't figure out pie. In fact, calculating pi is used as a stress test for computers because it can never truly be calculated. Dividing 22 by 7 is impossible. Violet, please pay attention, Miss Weather handed me the loner textbook, and bring your book to class next time. I walked to my desk, pretending I didn't notice everybody gawking at me. 
Miss Merriweather talked about pie while I forced myself to seem interested in her slow motion explanation. My brain drifted as I stared at her. She didn't look at the other math. T- she didn't look like the other math teachers at our school. Out of shape old white guys with ugly glasses and greasy hair. Miss Merriweather was tall and muscular like she spent spare time lifting weights or playing lacrosse. She was young for her teacher and her glasses had pretty turquoise frames. Her short, non-greasy magenta hair matched her magenta lipstick and looked nice against her brown skin. Miss Merriweather finally said, Open your textbook, so I slowly leafed through the loaner copy, stopping to read the graffiti. Sam was here. Abby loves Ben. I wondered why anybody wanted to announce being in math class or declare their love in a textbook. This is way too hard, Logan Mendez says. Someone should round pie to just plain three because that's close enough. Yeah, Zelda Buckman said. Pie has too many decibels. Even though Miss Merriweather had just lectured us about my doodling, I couldn't resist making one simple graph. Mathematical intelligence, very, very high. Talkativeness, very, very low. When I finished, I looked up to find Mrs. Weriweather towering over me, staring at my graph. I flipped over my paper fast. I wish I could melt into the floor like the Wicked Witch to save myself from humiliation. I mouthed sorry to Miss Merriweather. She raised her thick eyebrows at me. She had that trying not to laugh expression Miss Kinsey and I sometimes that I got sometimes in the back seat of Grandpa Falls Apart when we text funny stuff about my mom while she was driving. When the bell rang, I rushed out of math class like it was on fire. I waited in the hallway for Mackenzie, whose first period class was two doors down from mine, and then we walked to my locker together. So something I know about pi is that if they go out to the 14th decimal place, they can calculate the diameter of the known universe to the with an error of a hydrogen atom, which is very, very teeny. Let's see what else is Violet up to. Then we walked to my locker together. It was my mom's fault I hadn't had time to go to my locker before school started, so it was also her fault that I got to my locker with Mackenzie and that Mackenzie saw the envelope. She pointed to it and said, What's that, Violet? That was a small white and taped to the middle of my locker. Before Mackenzie, before I could answer, Mackenzie walked up to my locker, peered at the envelope. It's not from a boy. Look at the writing. I looked. My name was in the envelope with a large straight V. Perfect round circle dotting the I, another perfect circle for O, a pretty loop for the L, and a smooth E and T, two parallel curvy lines, swished underneath my name. Mackenzie was right. It's not from a boy. Not that it would be even if a boy were interested in me, which was impossible. I didn't think boys sent notes to girls that they liked. I couldn't think of any girls who would send me a note, either. No one beside Mackenzie. But that careful writing, the perfect round circles and pretty lines definitely wasn't hers. Her handwriting, her writing always seemed like a part of a ransom note, or an SOS scribbled in a state of emergency. Mackenzie tore the envelope off my locker, handed it to me, and said, You can read it in private if you want. I don't need privacy, I said, because I couldn't imagine telling Mackenzie I did. But after I opened the envelope and reread the note, I had wished I had asked for privacy. Uh Uh-oh. Hi, Violet. Congratulations on getting the lion part. You are really talented. I'm so happy we're both in the play. Sincerely, Allie.
Oh, now I know why Allie's so popular, Mackenzie said. Uh, phony compliments make people think she's nice. I felt my face tighten. It was so hard for Mackenzie to think of me as really talented or as a person who makes someone happy. I glanced at her and noticed she was clenching her jaw. Maybe she felt the beautiful, popular girl, the girl who had gotten the starring role Mackenzie had wanted, was now trying to get her best friend, too. So I said, sounds like Allie is desperate, and Mackenzie relaxed her jaw a little. And then I said, there must have been a sale at the exclamation point store. I crumpled Allie's note and added, where's the trash can? Mackenzie smirked. Then I stuffed the note and envelope in my pocket and hoped there wasn't a trash can nearby. As soon as school ended, I went to the nearest bathroom, an eighth grader with raccoon eye makeup and black... Whoops. That's chapter six. Let's see here. Chapter six.